Alan Zabrowski, Ph.D., University of Michigan, is a 10-year U.S. Marine Corps veteran and a graduate of the U.S. Army War College. Now, not only that, Dr. Zabrowski, correct me if I'm wrong here, not only are you a graduate of the U.S. Army War College, but you were director of studies there for some period of time. Is that correct? That's correct, for five and a half years. Five and a half years as director of studies at the U.S. Army War College. You know, of all the things that I would love to be able to have trailing behind my name, Dr. Zabrowski, uh, being the director of studies at the U.S. Army War College would definitely be one of them. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. The only real winner at, from 9-11 and the wars that it spawned, Iraq, Afghanistan and Iraq, and of course Iran on the, coming up to the front burner and Syria still simmering on the back burner, is Israel. No one else benefits. No other country benefits. That doesn't mean that people in the country don't benefit but no other country does. What, what we need to stand up and say is they did 9-11. Mm -hmm. They did it. I, am, I have had long conversations over the past two weeks with contacts at the Army War College at its headquarters Marine Corps, and I've made it absolutely clear in both cases that it is 100% certain that 9-11 was a Mossad operation, mm -hmm. period. Mm -hmm. 9-11 right. has led directly to 60,000 Americans dead and wounded. A second way of looking at it, and I'm just going to be mentioning a few of the things that have, that have sort of led me to this. Uh, a second thing is, is to look at the requirements for the, for the conduct of this type of an operation. I mean, even taking the U.S. government's case, Neither Al-Qaeda nor any other terrorist operation in the world has the discipline, the skills, the coordination, anything else you wish, even to pull off a simultaneous four-plane hijacking, much less do what they did. Well, third, yeah. third, there's WTC-7, the collapse of the third tower, yeah. not hit by a plane, clear control demolition and whatever one might think of of the people that were supposedly in the plane and let's buy the usg case for a moment let's say they were all there you know that this was a four plane hijacking and they decided to do it there is no way in the world they could have had access to a to a single wtc building much less three of them to wire them for demolitions and bring them down to wire a massive building for a controlled demolition much less carry off a, a, uh, a four-plane hijack. Well, I, you totally different it. capabilities. 90 to 96 percent of the mainstream media in the United States are either Jewish or Zionist owned. That's right. The fact that, that there was a clamp on discussions about 9-11, on suppression of WTC-7, which is whose collapse is virtually unknown in America, makes it very clear to me that the people who run it either knew, suspected, or feared that the evidentiary trail an investigation would reveal would lead straight back to Israel. Otherwise, there would have been a feeding frenzy and they would have gone at it. The services, all of the services, have their own newspapers, they have their own professional journals, widely read, well thought of, none of which, none of which is subject to the censorship and control that the mainstream media is. And they can have, that can have an effect. There are like 27 million veterans in the United States. The Veterans for Foreign Wars, the American Legion, each of the services has a veterans organization, like the Association of the U.S. Army. There, um, there's money there. There's votes there. And as someone wrote about a week ago, you know, the, the, if, you, if you want to talk about, a, about the true 800-pound gorilla in the American lobby system, it's not APAC. It's the American military and the American veterans organization. And if they ever get it, if they ever get energized, that's where you can do it. Crystallize their opposition. That's where Congress suddenly changes. This, this is a critical year 
the next the next three to four months are going into the going into an American congressional election year. And most members of Congress are extremely vulnerable. They're vulnerable when they go back to their home districts because the local media also is large, like, like, the mil- like the military and service journals, the local media also is largely not bought or censored by, by the Zionists. Congress in Washington, the mainstream media, this is the enemy's battleground. That's where they have, that's their strength. That's where they have their resources, their visibility, their access, and their numbers, and where the members of Congress are also largely immune from their, their own constituencies at home. They have their own interests, and their interests are the local constituency. And these are the people that need to be, need to be hit. These are the people that need to be activated, and that's why, according to that principle we were talking about earlier, These are the ones who need to be the recipients of the message.